bazooka tank M50 onto's the thing? Question mark? I really thought that the Mark 19 was the most Marine Corps thing to ever be invented, but I was wrong because it's absolutely this. Right, man. Today we're talking <laughs> about the M50 Ontos, a.k.a. Custom gaming PCs, they're built right here in America with American tech support. They have a lifetime warranty and they will do all kinds of crazy custom stuff if that's what you want. Here's a video. Love it. Line. Great, moving on. Okay. That's epic. Found electrician gaming, uh, gaming PC line one. Here's the deal. Once upon a time in the 1950s, the United States Army would set out to answer a question that had plagued mankind for decades. What if we took a tank and covered it in fucking bazookas? And to aid them in this enormous feat of engineering fuckery, they would turn to the one demographic of people on the planet. They could do this insanely childish and dangerous idea justice. The farmers, by way of yes! Alex Palmer, a tractor manufacturing company. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that the grunts and the farmers are going to come together and work on a grunts and crafts project. All right, it's absolutely going to get done. It's not going to be fucking safe, but it's going to get done and it's going to work. So they F farmers and marines team up. That's kind of like, like why I say the three people that I'd go to if I needed something done are the rednecks, the marines, and engineers. If you get three of them in a bar, that bar's ending up on the moon. All I'm saying. Took the M56 light tank, ripped the turret off, threw that shit away, and then proceeded to weld on top six M40 106 millimeter recoilless rifles. Wow. Yeah, technically they're not bazookas, they're recoilless rifles. There's a slight difference in how they function, but at the end of the day, as far as 99.9% .9 of people need to be concerned, it's a giant metal tube that you point at the enemy to blow them the fuck up, a.k.a. it's a bazooka. Plus, yeah. bazooka tank sounds way cooler than recoilless rifle tanks. Yeah. That's what we're going with. Now, I think we can all agree that welding six of these on top of a single vehicle is mildly ridiculous. And I'm surprised they stopped at six, being completely honest. The best way possible. However, it only gets worse from here. Because why don't you go ahead and ask me how they aim this monstrosity i mean look at it it's got six different barrels none of them are anywhere near each other clearly it's going to be a nightmare if not impossible to aim this thing accurately right wrong the farmers and the grunts got together and said ah we'll just use a spotting rifle they then proceeded to mount a 50 caliber rifle on top of every single bazooka barrel yes! and then they would just fire 50 caliber tracer rounds until they started hitting their desired target you know the uh the the mojo jojo Powerpuff Girls, right? It's the most evilest thing I've ever seen. This is the most redneck thing I've ever seen, and I fucking love it. Well, this is the most America thing I've ever seen, specifically. Then they would fire the bazooka. They're literally aiming a giant gun with a slightly smaller giant gun. I don't even know how to begin to write a punchline for that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and... Yep. I mean, could you imagine how confusing this would be to the enemy? Imagine you're some anonymous bad guy held up in a house or in a building somewhere, and this fucking monstrosity pulls around the corner as your butthole puckers, and you realize that this is probably going to be the longest, shortest day of your life. <laughs> the longest, shortest day of your life. <laughs> yes. My question is, especially if someone has actual experience with one of these things, is fortunate son playing? That is my only question. And your new pronouns are about to be here and over there. <laughs> this thing aims at you, fires, and it blows a nice little hole in the wall next to you as you're like, I mean, it's not good, but it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yep. So the farmers finished up the prototypes and took it out to Aberdeen Proving Ground with the Army and the Marine Corps, at which point they promptly said, fire all six at once, we want to see what'll happen. And the sheer amount of- God bless the Marines. <laughs> By extension as well, because the Army was part of this, God bless the Army. <laughs> see, here's the thing, is that Marine officer is like, like, knife hand saluting that thing. Fire all of them, fire all these guns backblast from that knocked bricks out of the wall of the bomb shelter they were in <laughs> shattered all the windows of the vehicles they used to get out there. <laughs> it was at that point that the army said they were no longer interested in having this vehicle due to the sheer amount of backblast and they really really did not like the fact that somebody had to get outside of the vehicle to individually reload each recoilless rifle after they had been fired the uh -huh. marine corps on the other hand <laughs> said i'll take three hundred the marine corps ordered 300 of these fucking things all I'm saying is the Marine Corps is based. Everything I've heard of the Marine Corps and decisions the Marine Corps makes like this, I could I could get along with the Marines very well. <laughs>
which is terrifying to think about. I mean, to be honest, and it pains me to say this, but as far as logic goes, I actually have to side with the Marines on this one. Oh! He's over here bitching like, oh, you could get shot at while you're trying to reload. And the Marine Corps is like, we've been getting fucking shot at since 1775 without a bazooka tank. Imagine how much fun it's going to be with a bazooka tank. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, what the fuck is going to be left to shoot at you after you shoot the first six gigantic bazookas that general direction? And even if somebody was still alive and they did have big enough balls to pop their head up to try to shoot at you while you're reloading, you still get to shoot at them with your spotting 50 caliber yeah. fucking rifles and the 19, 19, 30 caliber machine gun on it. Like, it's just, it's a win-win. And I know what you're all thinking, but how did it perform in real life and not just on the chalkboard? Thank you so much for asking. It was first deployed in 1964 to the Dominican Republic during oh. the Operation Power Back, where it promptly destroyed both the tanks that they ran across, that being the AMX-13 and an L-60. And then after that issue was resolved, all 300 of them were promptly sent to Vietnam. Case is <laughs> a kicker with that. There was no established battle doctrine for this weapon. There's no rules, there's no standard operating procedures, and there was no Marine Corps MOS that was designated as being responsible for this weapon. <sighs> I'm just... Just hearing the intro to Fortunate Son on repeat in my head as the Marines are just going, oh, oh yeah. Meaning, there's no one guy that's like the expert. They literally took 300 of these fucking monstrosities, gave them to the Marine Corps, and said, here's your bazooka chariot, kids, have fun. Shit got out of hand. Uh, yeah. You're so dumb. If you knew anything, you'd know that during the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong had virtually no tanks, meaning that a tank destroyer like this would be virtually useless. But not, 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 not quite, ladies and gentlemen. Not necessarily. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Beehive Round, aka the Flechette Round. What? One of these had ten thousand hardened steel darts inside of them and when fired they went fucking everywhere and this weapons platform can fire six of them at a time meaning that this thing can turn and proceed to shoot sixty thousand fucking nails in your general direction okay when the trees started talking they weren't talking for very long <laughs> the coast was so dominant on the battlefield that the enemy began actively avoiding it meaning that the marine corps loved it because when this thing was anywhere near them they were very seldom if ever ambushed and not only was the onus <laughs> effective in jungle warfare but urban warfare as well <laughs> Woo, this thing is screaming war crime and i love it <laughs> it's, it's not a war crime the first 300 times <laughs> During the Tet Offensive at the Battle of Wei, which is one of the only examples of heavy urban combat to happen during the Vietnam War, the Antos would prove absolutely dominant. Not only was it highly effective against fortified enemy positions, but it was extremely effective at convincing enemies to evacuate buildings. You see, at this point in time, the enemy was already intimately acquainted with the Antos and knew how it operated. <laughs> so all the Marines had to do to get an entire building to clear out was shoot the 50 caliber spotting rifle through the window a couple times, and all of the enemies would, and I quote, scurry out of the building like rats when you turn the lights <laughs> on, because they knew what was going to come next after that 50 caliber round. That 50 cal is just a common Unfortunately, the original 350 Antoses would be the only ones ever created, and after the Vietnam War, the remaining ones would all be turned over to the U.S. Army, where they would be decommissioned, stripped down, and sold off to construction companies as tracked vehicles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. However, some of them did make their way into museums where their legacy is still preserved today. In conclusion, in the 1950s, a bunch of farmers and the United States Marine Corps came together to work on a grunts and crafts project, and what they created was so childish, so ridiculous, and so devastatingly effective that it could only be characterized as the thing. Yes. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. I wonder if I can fit a bazooka tank in here. You might be able to. I'm sure there's a tank. I'm sure there's a tank. Yeah. I'm sure there's a safe company that would make that. I, my love for rednecks, marines, and engineers still continues. I feel that this is the base, <laughs> the base take to have. Jesus Christ, that is something fucking else. Thank you, 1950s farmers and marines. Wow.